What is going on, Jerome's? Uh, a little bit later dump than usual, but but it is what it is. First off, F Boston. F Boston straight in the face. That's all I got to say. Uh, not even talking about Wolf Celtics. Just talk about Boston in general. Boston. Anyways, uh, so, so r random tidbits as well as a little bit of Vikings uh, stuff uh, to get to on this beautiful, wonderful Wednesday. Uh, first up is, so wild card weekend. And yeah, Vikings aren't in it. It is what it is. Uh, but wild card weekend's still fun because you have these six games and I mean, the, they're the teams that have made the playoffs and there's always trash talk and there's always... It's always stories, man. It's great. But uh, some of these ticket prices are super interesting. So uh, going through, uh, it's a buck twenty one. So this is the cheapest tickets available. So uh, up in the nosebleeds, all, all up in the air up there. A buck twenty one. Ten uh, Houston Texans fans have been champing at the bit for a winner. They got them some C.J. Stroud, D'Amico Ryan's doing the damn thing. Uh, the Browns and Jumpa Joe Flacco, one hundred twenty one bucks uh, for the third deck and. You may say that, hey, why is Chiefs Dolphins uh, so so low? Well, it's gonna be freezing. It's gonna be freezing, Kansas City. And here's the thing too, like, so uh, I had family in Kansas City growing up, so we would always spend a little bit of time there every year. And Kansas City, with it being right in the prairie, gets probably the worst of all the seasons. So they get scorching blazing hot and humid in august they get completely freezing cold in the winter they get tornadoes uh, so i mean i'm surprised they can't even get a hurricane in there but, but yeah Kansas city yeah that part of the midwest it's just like ground zero for bad weather at at times but it's gonna be cold it's, it's gonna be cold in Kansas city man and also uh hammer the under on this game and also hammer the the the, the chiefs minus four because i think that uh yeah, this is gonna be pretty one-sided. Anyways, uh, the uh, so you can get an Arrowhead pretty damn cheap, and it's good. So the hard cords are gonna be out there, but I mean, we Vikings fans have been to freezing cold games. You know, the Shank at the Bank, uh, as well as uh, that that random uh, Bears game uh, at TCF after the dome collapse, where Bert Favor played his last snap. Uh, future Vikings legend Corey Wooten just like Farb's head off the turf, which is cement basically. Uh, but yeah, Arrowhead six and nine bucks. Nice uh, for the bills. So you got the Steelers coming in. Ooh, Mason Rudolph. Great. No, I think the bills are going to roll about a buck 48 up at Orchard Park, 91 bucks uh, for Jera world. Uh, but I'm sure that's standing room only. So there's these videos that, that go viral uh, of you know, when they open up the gates at AT&T stadium and people run in and everyone's like, well, why are they running in? Everyone has assigned seats. Now there's a lot of standing room only area in Jerry world and you know, people stand around the concourse and there's tons of like bars around the stadium. So, I mean, 91 bucks just to get into the building. It's still kind of pricey. Now this one, this one sucks. All right, so uh, Lions fans, I, I fully understand, are super hyped up about their first playoff appearance in forever. But 430 bucks for the cheapest seat. And this is what happens when you, you have a team that's been bad for a long time. All of a sudden, they get good. Uh, and ticket prices, whether the team increases them, which the Lions have, or just the economics of the secondary market uh, increasing demand, uh, drive, driving up the price. I mean, the hardcore fans who have been spending their dollars for many, many years with bad teams, sometimes they get priced out or, or they get gouged. And you're seeing that with the Timberwolves now. And I, I do commiserate. Like a lot of you know, T-Wolves fans uh, you know, sitting through the Rasho Nesterovich years and all of a sudden, like the tickets are they're starting to get priced out. So, uh, again, the, the priciest ticket for Wild Card Weekend, Stafford and the Lions fully understand that. Also, the, the whole debate... You know, Lions fans are saying, oh, you should not wear Matthew Stafford Lions jerseys. Blah, 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 blah. Do whatever you want. This is America, man. Who who, who gives a poop, right? Uh, and also, uh, I feel like it's a decent balance where it's a tip of the cap to your guy, but you're still supporting your team. And uh, it, that's the whole thing where, hey, if you're a Lions fan, you can still respect Matthew Stafford and you want Matthew Stafford to be ass those three and a half hours uh, during the game. Like, both things can be true at once. So this whole, oh, hey, hey, you're not a true Lions fan if you wear a Matthew Stafford jersey. Shut up. Shut your face. Enjoy your one playoff appearance in 30 years. We'll see you again in 30 more years. Get out of here. Uh, then oh, uh, for you know, Bucks and Eagles. Oh, God. Like, I... I have to watch this game because also it's the Monday night game. But uh, if I didn't have to, it would just like skip, 
And also, hopefully, the, uh, Baker Mayfield and the Bucks roll over the Eagles. Uh, then 356 at, at Levi Stadium, which I, th- I feel like Levi Stadium is the worst stadium in the league. And not not because of structure or amenities or location, but just the vibe. I don't know. Like It, it feels like a soulless corporate monolith. But also, I guess you could say that about uh, uh, Allegiant as well as the L.A. Stadium. So who knows? Uh, then uh, 211, uh, Amber is the color of your energy uh, with the uh, with the Ravens TBD. Ravens are so good, man. Like, I, I think barring injury, like how is it not a Ravens Niners Super Bowl? I mean, the, the colors were in the logo. Who knows, man? But like, like we said, the Dolphins Chiefs game is going to be freezing. It's gonna be, and t- at a certain point. Like the these one off weather games are neat, but at a certain point it just inhibits the football. Like at, at a certain point, does it get too cold where it, it isn't even a game? It's just a war of attrition, or is there too much snow? Nah, but we we haven't found that part yet. Mm. Uh, speaking of lions, <laughs> so I again I know that you're proud of your accomplishment, uh, but the, the hanging the banner for the winning the NFC North for the first time uh, in forever. So 2023 NFC North champs. The NFC North has been around since 2022 when they had realignment with the Texans came in. But also, what's even worse is the Central Division champs, which how long was the Central Division a thing? At least 1983, probably back further, probably goes all the way back to the merger. Now that I think about it, back in uh, 1969 or 1970. So... The fact that, all right, so say it's 1970, just for ease of math. We, we could find this out because I, I literally have a rectangle in front of me that has uh, access to all the information in the known universe. But uh, so say 1970, so 30 years plus two, so 32 years. So they won the division three times, 83, 91, 93 in 32 years. Yikes. That's what, one out of 11, 9% of the time. Yikes. But, hey, at least they had that nice run with Barry in 91-93. But also, you're you're not shocked why he quit. I don't know. But all, all this is y'all. First off, why, why is Jerry Goff dropping in y'all? I mean, he, he's California white bread everything. Uh, bruh. Y'all saw that banner. Uh, we got more of those effing things to hang, Jerry Goof. I really hope that Matthew Stafford and the Rams just come in and boat race the Lions. And I, I think it's definitely a chance. Mm. Uh, something that has zero chance of, uh, is uh, TJ uh, uh, playing against the Bills. He's already, already been ruled out with the MCL sprain, which is unfortunate. But uh, his brother, JJ Watt, perhaps you've heard of him. Uh, he <laughs> It's funny. He had someone up, do up a jersey swap, him in a Steelers uniform. Think they'd notice? Well, I think that they would notice because uh, 90 for the Steelers would actually be playing good. Mm. Uh, no, but re- yeah, respect. T.J. Watt is his own man. J.J. Watt in his prime, like the, the, the four-year stretch when he was defensive player of the year, I think three times, was just absolutely bat bleep insane. But you know, injuries caught up to him. Like he was still a good player towards the end of his year. But J.J. Watt. I mean, people forget J.J. Watt was literally a transcendent defensive player. Like, he changed games. It's just, yeah, yeah. Injuries suck, man. Um, Something that doesn't suck is Dalton Reiser potentially being back. Uh, Vikes fan page cobbled this together. Uh, It would be a surprise if Vikings and Dalton Reiser can't agree on a happy medium this offseason. Darren Doogie Wolfson mentioned on Score North. Reisner joined Minnesota during the season and filled in nicely to the point where they traded Ezra Cleveland away to start him. Uh, He is now set to be an unrestricted free agent. And... Yeah, I, I think loyalty does work both ways. The Vikings took a chance on Reisner. Reisner took a chance on the Vikings, and I think it worked out. Now, he certainly earned himself a payday, but you know, could he be back at you know five, $6 million a year, say in a two-, three-year deal? Yes, uh, I think it's certainly possible and plausible. Uh, he's really bought in. Uh, I think he's great with the media. He's great with his teammates. Uh, his, his wife loves the great state of Minnesota, so I, I think that uh, Reisner will certainly be back starting a left guard for the Vikes. Also, Jordan freaking Addison. So uh, Addison for me was the best rookie wide receiver outside of Puka Nakua, which I don't know, man. Like uh, all of a sudden, all the revisionist history is like, oh, we knew Puka Nakua was going to be the thing back in the fifth round. Please, please. Uh, but Addison uh, this year, 70 uh, catches for 9-11 as well as 10 touchdowns. Uh, and he was fantastic. 
And he proved, like, while J.J. was out and while Kirk was healthy, that Addison can be a wide receiver one. Now, his numbers definitely dipped uh, towards uh, the end of the season because, I mean, he's dealt with four quarterbacks. And also, I mean, Josh Dobbs was not really a passing quarterback. Uh, so I, I do think that Addison, I mean, a Addison's going to be great. And the fact that he benefits so much from J.J. getting all that attention, getting doubled and bracketed is just I mean, the sky's the limit. I think the Vikings are going to have the best receiver duo in the league for many years to come. Uh, also, what was supposed to be good is the Vikings offensive line. Now, it, it was so weird. So, analytics-wise, the analytics love the Vikings offensive line. But just eyeball test, it's been a little bit rough. But uh, Ben Baldwin uh, assembled this. So, pass protection ra ratings composite. Uh, and from the notes, PFF grade 40%. SIS blown block percentage 40%, and ESPN pass block win rate is 20%. And it's on a scale, so if you're the best, you get 100 and blah, blah, blah. But the Vikings, uh, with the composite rankings, end up second in the league behind the Eagles. The Vikings' offensive line is not as good as the Eagles, right? So they have the pieces, yes, but did they perform as one throughout the season? I mean, it's been tough. Uh, every single one of the Vikings' offensive linemen dealt with some injury at some point. Uh, some missed games. Some were just in-game, like with Reisner. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I, again, they have the pieces. I, I think that Chris Cooper's heading in the right direction. But the, these analytics don't tell the, the full picture. I, I would say that the Vikings probably have, like, a top 10-ish offensive line this year. Uh, but, I mean, especially the way that – you know, Mullins was protection, Dobbs was protected, and Jaron Hall especially was protected. Yeah. Uh, but also, at a certain point, it's just like, hey, so, some of these pressures and sacks are on the quarterback, but also the fact that the Vikings couldn't get a consistent run game going, I mean, that that's that, that stands out. Uh, something that doesn't stand out is Luke Getze. So, I remember when the Bears brought down Luke Getze from the Packers, like, hey, he's going to revolutionize the offense, and then he just had Justin Fields throw 17,000 uh, screen passes. Nah, but he got him, he fired, and it does – so I, I'm watching because I, I feel like the Bears are still going to clean house. Uh, so they fired Getze, they just sort of threw him under the bus, but I feel like there could be more changes, uh, but – I feel like Getze definitely inhibited the growth of Justin Fields and Eberflus. Uh, all right, so it looks like Eberflus is going to be back, but I, I I just feel like our guy, Kevin Warren. So Kevin Warren was an executive with the Vikings for a number of years. He was Big Ten commissioner for a hot second. They took over a CEO of the Bears. I think 100% he's trying to land Harbaugh. All right, so Harbaugh. You know, played with the Bears. Uh, Kevin Warren knows him from you know, him being Big Ten commissioner, coming off the nat national title. I think that because it, it, it's been weird in Hallis Hall because it's been like a holding pattern for the past 48 hours. And reportedly, it's been Ed Refluce at Kia Toilet just begging for his job and Ryan Poles just sitting there, whatever. So I, 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 I don't even know if Poles is safe. I mean, I don't know if Ed Refluce is safe. But I, I feel like Kevin Warren is trying to pull off a coup. And all, all the connections, oh, the Panthers, oh, the Commies, oh, the Chargers, oh, the Raiders are in on Harbaugh. I think that Kevin Warren is trying to back channel this thing. Kevin Warren is very good at his job. He is he is elite. He is Machiavellian. And I, I think that he is trying to land Harbaugh. And if he doesn't, I mean, he rolls with Eberflus for a year as basically a lame duck. And then he washes everyone out next offseason. So either way, Kevin Warren wins. Right. Uh, but I just feel like it's going to happen. And also, I mean... You could poo-poo on Harbaugh, but if Harbaugh lands with the Bears and say they take Caleb Williams at one or Drake May or whoever, so you got the number one pick uh, at quarterback and also you got Harbaugh with the Bears. Not feeling great about it. <laughs> and say with their second first-round pick at nine, they, they get um, you know, a, a Dunze or Neighbors or uh, uh, help Brock Bowers. <sighs> that, bo that bothers me. <laughs> That would bother me a lot, man. But uh, anyways, that's it. Uh, that's uh, Vikings random news dump on uh, this wonderful Wednesday. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.